Ladies and gentlemen, of course, those genders without those kinds of endearments. Welcome to another episode of the Extra Casual Podcast with your hosts, Gavin. And Ashton. And today we're kind of breaking away from the traditional stuff, how we do things. As in, we find an article, talk about it, then move on to another one. Instead, we're going to be talking about some other things, you know, just stuff that's happened in life over the past uh, week or so. Um, updates on the show. Uh, yeah, just some some video game topics, some updates on the show. Yeah. Some Gavin news, some Ashton news, you know, just yeah. more personal stuff. Uh, good shit. And uh, I believe it should, you know, it makes sense for us to start the podcast stuff. So would you like to take it away? So I have been, Gavin and I have been considering what we're going to do with the show. Have you know, as you guys notice, we don't upload weekly like we'd like to. You know, we have stuff we have to do beforehand and all that. Mm-hmm. But... What I wrote down is we're going to try to focus on quality over quantity. We're trying to make the best content for like you guys and everyone. Mm -hmm. And we don't want to just be pushing out like bare minimum, like tired, quick edited content, like needs to be good quality. Yep. So we're going to plan on doing a bi-weekly schedule for now. Yeah. Excuse me. (laughs) And another thing. We're going to be working on this is the second thing I need to talk about about the podcast is I am working on making a clips channel and I am figuring out what we're going to do for the final show, like scenery and setup, you know, because we have a couple flaws, as you guys can see. Yep. Now that we point them out, they're going to notice them. Yeah, they probably noticed them quite a while ago. (laughs) But we're going to try to figure out ways we can make the setup work so it's better for the viewing experience. We got a bigger screen already. That's amazing. Yep. And we just, we're going to add a couple things below for like cool props and like just stuff about the like show, show more about us. Yeah. And I think that's really it. Yeah, basically. Um, gotta make sure we're recording. Yeah. Excuse us. (laughs) It's still scuffed guys. We know. Very scuffed. Uh, yeah. Yeah. (laughs) As you can tell, we're still kind of trying to figure things out. Um, I felt like I was going to add something. Uh, oh, yeah. Like, I guess bec- also because we're moving to a bi-weekly schedule, it also allows us to kind of get a bigger uh, pool of topics in that span of time. Because a lot can happen even in, like, a day, for reference. We literally found a topic not even 30 minutes before we were going to start recording this. Yep. And it's actually like a really good topic. Yes. What we're what's on the video like the screen right now kinda hints at what the topic is. Yeah. Uh yeah. And also for sake of reference real quick, uh the topics that I ha- we have in the topic list, all of the all of them came from me. So and just because Eshin so- solely didn't have the time for it. But so uh yeah. And uh, I guess since we're ta- talking about the risk of rain, kind of, let's g- just move on straight on to the uh, n- the next thing. So, like like Ashton said, we watched a quick video of a trailer for the next uh, Risk of Rain DLC. Mm-hmm. We literally saw it like 30 minutes. It probably was uploaded like within an hour of since we saw it. Yeah, probably. But from what we saw, it... it the like the way that they animated like the the trailer for the DLC for Risk of Rain Two like the new DLC expansion, it it's like kind of comic book aesthetic like it's it's really cool. Yeah, I I we highly recommend you look it up mm, right now really cool. or after the show. Yeah, especially if you're you know a fan of Risk of Rain or if you're just a fan of roguelikes in general, you probably like it. I've said this before on the show where roguelikes are definitely my favorite genre. Yeah, same here. But we, as of what we know now, we don't actually know the characters from the trailer, right? Yeah. Unless it's Mithrix and... Uh, Providence, I believe Providence, it is. yeah. Which w- would be pretty dope, let's be real. Which, according to Risker and Lore, those are literally, like, the creators of almost everything in the game, basically. Yeah, everything on the whatever planet you crash land on. And if you get to be them, that would be pretty cool. That would add another melee character if you can be Mithrix. Yeah. Big what kind him. of mechanics do you think Mithrix would have? Uh, he probably have something similar to uh his boss fight. Like he might have the uh, like the pillar attack. He might have like a secondary where he shoots like those little beams he shoots at you. He could have like passive 
creatures spawn with him. That could, yeah, that or you know the attack where he, like jumps up high in the air and then smashes down with a shockwave. It might it might be like a mini version of that where you just jump up high in the air and then smash down with <laughs> a mini shockwave. Isn't so profit isn't really shown off in the second game, but it's more yeah. in the original game, right? Yeah, Providence is the profit. Uh, Providence. I'm getting it mixed up. Whatever. <laughs> That's all right. Whatever. Um. Yeah. He's the final boss of the original Risk of Rain. Hmm. Do you know his move sets? Uh, no, I haven't seen much of anything. Okay. But it's the trailer already. It's showing off like cool new maps and everything. Cause you know, with the, each DLC they show new maps and all that. Yeah. In fact, uh, it said that it was available for wishlist on Steam. So I went to see that, <laughs> and we looked at the uh. At the screenshots that came along with it, and the new areas look really cool. Mm hmm. Which was on Steam, guys. Trust me, it's really good. It's probably only going to be like, what was it, 13 bucks? I think we got for even less because when it came out, is there even on a is on a discount too? Mm -hmm. Wasn't it like eight bucks or something? Yeah, I think we might get it for it's eight. It's really cheap and it's really good because the original Risk of Rain is only like 20 bucks to begin with, like Risk of Rain 2. The DLC is only like 13. So it's not even going to be a sixty dollars game once you get both the DLCs and the original game, yeah. Or and like the you know what I mean, like the base game. So yeah, yeah. Um, let's see, one one of the areas that really stood out to me in the uh, screenshots was like the, uh, like the castle area with like vines or whatever gro growing on it. It's like all like blackened over. Sounds cool. Yeah. They're gonna do some like medieval aesthetic. That would be super cool. Honestly, they could do a lot. And also, it talked about uh, like climbing Colossus, whatever that would mean, which <laughs> sounds just very cool. It sounds like a new game mode of some sort. Honestly, it does. Climbing Colossus. Yeah. Hmm. Well, we can only see they did not give a release date, but we can only hope for it being sometime relatively soon. Especially since you know they already have screenshots for it, like for it yeah I would, i'd say it's gonna be like around christmas yeah, yeah that makes sense christmas release christmas because when when did they announce year. the dlc before this one and then when did it come out um i, I want to say it was a while yeah i want to say it was like a good couple months in advance but did they not had i'm pretty sure they had like didn't have an, a lot of gameplay to begin with for that so it's true also there's like a lot of like the dev thought uh like updates and stuff like that. Yeah, because they did like four or five of them, and aren't those like monthly? Yeah, I think so. Hmm. I'm just hoping that, because I mean, what's, it's November now, I think. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> just losing track of the months. So it's November, so then we have a, a couple months. Well, November, December. Yeah, we only have so it's like, about like a month and a half. Yeah, I highly doubt it's gonna come out Christmas time, especially if they really care about putting it out in good shape. Uh, my bet it's probably gonna release sometime, like late spring, early summer. That's my bet. Well, consider this also too, though. It's probably been about more than seven months since Survivors of the Void came out. That's true. So they may have just been working on it longer than what they originally did with Survivors of the Void, where they just announced it as soon as they're working on it. Yeah. Like, this might even be close to done. They're just doing the final tweaks. Yeah, that makes sense, because I highly doubt they've just been sitting around all day. Obviously, yeah. they've been working on it. Especially, like I said, there there are screenshots available. Yeah. <clears throat> well, I can only see... I wonder, I wonder what items they're going to be introducing. That's my big question. Some of the items from the last DLC are kind of, like, confusing. Yeah. Wait, are they, aren't they going to... Didn't they say with, like, each DLC they're adding a new, like, item type, too? Uh, I don't remember if they said that, but I know they said they were going to be adding at least a few items for each one, so probably even going to get more Void items, too. Can't wait for the Legendary items. Yeah. Legendary items are so good, but they also, they actually need to be carried by the weakest items. Yeah, which is kind of a good showing of uh balance, where... Even if you kind of get screwed over and get, like, no legendaries, you could still, like, make your way through as long as you're competent at the game. Yeah, and then you can also get screwed over if you get too lucky, which has happened to me before in this game. Yeah, back when we were running for uh, Monsoon. Yeah, I got, I got like, four legendary items before I had, like, not even f five, like, 
rare or common items. Like, I got so lucky that the legendary items couldn't even, like, no matter what I got, it wouldn't have benefited me. Yeah. I was too lucky. Yeah. <laughs> What's what's that one like call it DJ Khaled meme uh suffering from success? I don't know. DJ Khaled life is like Roblox. <laughs> That's <laughs> all I know. Did he actually say that? Yeah, he pulled up he pulled up in a golf cart or something. He was like, Life is like Roblox and then he drove away. <laughs> There's also we're about to go on a DJ Khaled town here. Or tangent here. Have you ever seen the video of him? He was on like Instagram Live or something, and he got stranded in like the middle of a lake on a jet ski, and it was getting dark out. And he's like, "Guys, pray for me, y'all." Oh yeah. And he was like talking about about like never losing faith, and then like at the end, he's like, "See, guys, I told you this is what happens when you don't lose faith." <laughs> I think I watched Charlie's video on it. <laughs> he was just kind of reacting to it. Yeah, DJ Khaled does a lot of interesting things. Yeah. Except for make music, because he doesn't really do that anymore for some for whatever reason. He just puts his producer tag like everywhere. Yep. Did you know that DJ Khaled and Tyler the Creator had beef? Really? Because DJ Khaled's like model is you know like we the best music we number one. Mm-hmm. And when Tyler the Creator released one of his most popular albums, it overtook DJ Khaled's album, and he got like super mad <laughs> and was like, people were saying that he was. This is all alleged because I don't know exactly, but. They were saying, like, he was, like, freaking out in his office about it and was, like, getting really mad that some random person came up and, like, took him out of his spot and he was supposed to be number one. We no longer best music. We number two. (laughs) We the second best music. Oh, no. But, yeah, like, he... His album literally was stacked to the brim. Like, each song had a different, like, huge creator on it. I'm pretty sure, like, Justin Bieber, Future, you know, like, all the the top artists. Mm Mm-hmm. And still, it reached second out of, like, I'm pretty sure the album that made it to number one was Igor, which is a really good album. <laughs> From Tyler, the creator, of course. Yeah. But yeah, that's that's my DJ Khaled tangent. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, I have to figure out mine He now. says, philosoph- like, f- philosophical things and hates on artists hmm. because they make better music than him. That's yeah. about it. Chris, he hasn't started beef with Shady, then. You know, whatever. Um, okay. So now we got Mario Wonder. Gavin and I played a little bit of Mario Wonder. It came out about two weeks ago. Yeah, I'd say so. And I kind of played a little bit for him. We said that we were going to play it together, but I I got tempted (laughs) and bought it early, so I just played, like, the first world area. Yeah. And Gavin and I played, what was it, like, about halfway through the second world? Yeah, I'd say so. So, what are your thoughts on it, Gavin? Um, I think it's pretty good. Like... Uh, the exploration, like the new Wonder Flower mechanic, to be more specific, is really cool. Um, new power ups, they're they're pretty goofy, but they're also pretty cool. Yeah, the only ones we we've seen so far is the balloon one and the elephant one. Yeah, but those are still like the balloon one, or not the balloon, the bubble one. Mm-hmm. The bubble one is like mario just throws bubbles and whatever gets stuck in them basically just pops or like evaporates yeah they turn into coins it's basically like the fire flower but it Different. can go through walls right yeah okay yeah that's actually then, required to solve a puzzle or, or two and then the elephant is just like a big tanky character you can suck up water throw water that was shown in the trailer mm-hmm. but one of my favorite things about the like mario wonder is There's so much cool, like, details and aspects about that game, like, the detail of the character animations makes, like, new, new Super Mario Bros. Wii look awful. Yeah. Like, the, the terms of, like, animation and, like, detail on everything, like, Mario running through a pipe and he has to grab his hat, or, like, depending on what character you are, they have different subtle animations, like, the way that they pick things up or like the way that they go through pipes, it's all different. And you have 12 different characters. You have all these badges. <laughs> yep. A lot of customization. There's yeah. lots of secrets too. There's like secrets that I wouldn't have even known if I didn't see like a YouTube video on it already. Mm-hmm. Like they're that good of secrets. Some of them. Yeah. It just adds like more replayability to it. Cause then you're like, Hey, I never got that. Where's the star on that one. Then you got to look it up if you can't figure it out. Yeah. And, uh, you know, before people, like, 
Actually, no. How, 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 should, how should I say this? Like, the game is, like, overall, like, from the levels we played, it's, you know, not that difficult, but there are some pretty hard ones. Yeah, they, they have, like, a difficulty star rating. Mm-hmm. We were on, like, a rhino... Yeah. Dr- or what's the flower called psychedelic flower we're yeah. just gonna call it that yeah we were on like a psychedelic flower mission it was four star rating and it was like a bowl thing where we had to collect all these like um aren't they called p coins like canonically uh well like the blue coins from the p switches yeah the, so we had to hit these p switches to get the blue coins and we had to keep hitting them while running on the stampede of like bulls that were constantly running. So we had to keep up with them and we actually struggled to get all the coins and we didn't even get all the coins. Yeah. It took us a few t- attempts to get through. And then there's the, uh, wall jump challenge that I was doing. I was watching Gavin play and it looked like he was having a hard time. Yeah. Because like, first off there's like, uh, there's like some collectibles, but not like the, like, uh, seed ones, just like the, the purple coin ones. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, you. <laughs> it it was just really hard because, like, towards the top, you have to, like, w- like uh, wall jump, at a very specific time, to like st- land perfectly. And if you don't do that, you're just kind of you're gonna fall. So you're just saying that. If we had problems with it, then there's definitely going to be younger children that have way worse problems with it. Yeah. They're just going to give up. For sake of reference, although, uh, I'm also pretty bad at platformers. Yeah. We should actually, Joe, we should do sometime. What? Live stream on the Clips channel for the podcast, us playing Mario Wonder. Yeah, we could do that. That would be kind of fun. Yeah. It's not like we're making money, so, you know, Nintendo can't won't be able to come after us with the Nintendo Partner Program, or whatever it's called. That's true, and if they do, then we can just remove it. <laughs> yep. But, any other... Oh, there's one more thing I wanted to note about Mario Wonder. Mm-hmm. There was some really cool things I didn't even know the Switch could do. So, like, the Switch is... How old is the Switch? It is... I th- want to say... More than eight, eight years old? Yeah, I want to say around eight years old. So, the same technology and everything. Like, I don't think they updated the Switch controllers, really, the whole entire time. Yeah, not really. It was, like, a battery upgrade whenever they did the revamp. Yeah. Where, basically, these controllers made a sound that I never heard, because you know how they have Rumble HD or whatever they call it? Mm-hmm. Like, advanced vibration patterns and, like, different tones of vibrations that other controllers don't have? Mm-hmm. This controller literally made the sounds of notes as you ran across the note blocks. <laughs> I didn't, like... I had my volume down and I was playing in bed and all of a sudden my like joy cons are making the sounds of the note, like the musical note blocks as I run across them in the game. And it was actually like tuned perfectly. Like it wasn't just, they all sounded the same. Like as I was running, it was progressing in the notes and I just sat there for like 10 minutes just running <laughs> back and forth on them. Cause I was <laughs> amazed about how this controller can make those sounds. <laughs> uh, Nintendo basically got their own patent on something. That that's cool though, cause those the Rumble HD is so amazing. Like, there's a Mario Party game, mm-hmm. we have to like cook bacon, and the only way you can tell if the bacon's like good cooked or not is like the way the controller vibrates, which is like super subtle details and like how it vibrates. But mm-hmm. it's enough to be able to make a mini game off of how well the vibration of it is. Yep. So just like how in the old, or not the old Mario Party games, but in um like the handheld Mario Party games, there's a <laughs> microphone based mini games. Oh yeah, like the <laughs> the ones where it's like try to mimic King Boo and then it's just somebody screaming and then you get a 10 out of 10. <laughs> Have you ever seen those videos? I don't think so. <laughs> They're amazing. <laughs> like it'll be like, so it'll be like a bar and then, you know, like how whenever you talk when we were like recording Gavin, how it like shows the, like the wavelength of us talking. <laughs> it'll be like that. So it'll be like Toad's voice like, ha ha. And then somebody will go, ha like over the whole thing and then all the people will hold up a sign at like 10 out of 10 <laughs> it it was a little janky yeah it was I, still amazing though i think it was a little bit more than a little janky let's be real it, it still did its service it was still funny yeah still big funny it didn't break the game that much yeah uh, i didn't break the game at all <laughs> 
<laughs> so I'm just thinking about it and just screaming at the top of your lungs just to imitate a character and you get 10 out of 10. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that was literally like that. If you were to show me, and then I, I'm pretty sure I saw the video too. The guy was doing it, and then he tried to do it right, and he got a lower score. (laughs) (laughs) So what is it? Uh, No, I think it's right towards the people that that cared less. The kids that just like screaming into the microphone get the best points. (laughs) There's a lot of kids that do a lot of screaming. I totally forgot that the DS even had a microphone. Yeah, it wasn't very good because you just use it for like. like voice notes, right? Yeah, basically. Because it's not like you can talk to people through your DS. Yeah. Especially like the DS Lite. Yeah. Maybe like the 3DS. Or not the not the 3DS, the 2DS or whatever it was before the 3DS. Well, the 3DS came first, then it was the 2DS, one, oddly enough. No, I'm think there was one in between that was like an upgraded version of the DS that looked like the 3DS, but it wasn't the 3DS. The DSi? Was it the DSi? I th- yeah, I think so, because I owned one. Uh, those are W. That's, like, my favorite generation of consoles is, like, 3DS to DS. Yeah. I <laughs> own all of my important DS games, and I'm never selling them. Yeah, me too. I'm really tempted to buy something to even back them up somewhere else, just in case, like, I ever lose my game files. I still have, like, a physical, like, USB that has them on them. Yeah. Well. Okay, let's see. I think that was it for talking about Mario Wonder. So now we have... <laughs> this is a thing that happened at school. Yep. And, uh... I'm gonna let like, uh, Gavin take this one yeah. away. Uh, real quick, uh, how are we doing in terms of time? Time check. Scuffed. Do, 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 do. 24 minutes. Looking okay. pretty good. So, if we take you to a, a time known as, like, a week ago. On a Friday. Mm-hmm. So, we had a guest speaker come in. Now, I want to uh, preface this by saying, in all the time that me and Ashton have gone to the school, we've never had a guest speaker. Not once. I can't remember. I know we've probably had one or two, but, like, they're not even, rem- like, memorable. And that probably wasn't even at the high school. It was probably at the middle school. So. Yeah, probably. Anyway, um, let's see, and I also want to preface this for something, so, like, last, like, over the last couple of years, uh, this is an important detail, uh, you know, whenever we're walking down, or, around the school, you know, there's just be, like, posters of, like, just, you know, stuff, like, uh, after school activities or, or whatever, but now... Like, plastered all over the walls, there's, like, a lot of suicide awareness, and I just find it really funny that when this batch of freshmen came in, all of a sudden it's a lot of, like, mental health stuff. The school is like, hey, we should, these kids are insane, we need to, we need to make sure that they're mentally stable. Yeah, and the freshmen this year are really bad, you know. Of course, there are outliers, as there is for everything, but they are really bad. They're just almost all across the board bad. Yeah. Like, disrespectful to the teachers, disrespectful to students. They get in fights all the time. They destroy bathrooms. Yep. We literally are down to one bathroom in our school right now, by the way, Gavin. Really? Yep. They they locked the one upstairs again, and then they destroyed the one down by the student resources. Dude, no fucking way. So now we only have the lunchroom bathroom. <laughs> do you, now, now all the kids, all the freshmen that smoke and do whatever they do in that bathroom are all going to be there constantly. Yep. They should just make a dedicated smoking area for the kids at this point. Yeah. Have, like, a camera. Just, you know. Just, <laughs> I, I don't even care anymore. Just let them go there. They can't get in trouble when they're in there as long as they keep it in there. Kind of yeah. like in Japan, how they have those, like, sectioned areas where you're only allowed to smoke in them. Yeah. Uh. Anyway, so, this kind of moves on to what, what the... Uh, guest speaker was on. So first off, we start and there's like we walk in. I was, I wait for Ashton, but the first thing you see when you walk in is that there's music equipment. Mm-hmm. Now you might be asking yourself, why would there be music equipment? Yeah, because keep in mind, this is supposed to just be a speaker. Yeah, this guy was just supposed to come and talk to us. I don't know. There was like a whole stage set up. Yeah, basically. 
and um like they there's like a disclaimer or something saying that you will experience concert like uh like noises and meanwhile me and ashton <laughs> both went to a concert over the summer it's like oh boy this is gonna be great Hey, it was not nearly that loud. It was like a photosensitive warning too. Yeah, because there's like strobe lights. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Didn't we make a joke about that? That someone's gonna have a, f- a fucking seizure and die because of this? <laughs> yeah. The thing that's supposed to like keep kids safe and like talk about it and all that is gonna make some kid die because he <laughs> doesn't know like he's epileptic. Yeah. Then they then they played like two songs that like nobody knew. Mm-hmm. Because- and like... Trust me, I, I've talked this, about this before. When you're in a concert setting and you don't know the song, it is really hard to try to sing along with the song because most of the time the other background noises, like the guitars, the drums, and all that, are outnumbered by the actual singer. Yeah. So it's like more of your singing and then all the stuff's playing around you. And if you don't know the song, then you can... It's really hard to like recognize or tag along with it. Yeah. <laughs> As as we probably mentioned, it was a lot of f- fun for Ashton at the Event Sevenfold concert where he didn't barely knew any songs. I know a couple. <laughs> I think didn't you only know like a little piece of Heaven, Nightmare, and uh, G, and that was basically it. <laughs> yeah. You might know who held the king. I don't know. Anyway, I knew a little bit. Um, but back to <laughs> yeah, back, back to the back speech. To, back to the speech thing. So the music was. St- stopped uh i guess a little funny detail a kid start, took off his shirt and started waving it around <laughs> in front of us yep yeah so then, it was probably a freshman yeah it was realistically a freshman <laughs> um yeah then then they want uh, during it they also want us to like get up and move and we basically did like the bare minimum like i think i the only thing i did was stand up i didn't move a, I, an inch i didn't even stand up he was like Pointing to the different sides of the crowd, like you over there, yeah, you, you, stand up, stand up. I want you to start clapping, and it's like clap to the beat, and it's like you guys over there, over there. I want you to start cheering, cheering to the beat, and he's like trying to get, he's trying to hype up this crowd that he's never met before. Yep, I mean it worked at least for a f- like, but it was all like artificial, people. like they were just doing it to like taunt the guy, basically. Mm-hmm. Let's see. And then uh, when the music died down, th- thank God, <laughs> um, the speaker guy came out and uh, obviously we're not going to give his name, A, because I don't remember it, and B. Um, I, I looked him up on Instagram, by the way, because he had his socials everywhere, Kevin. Mm-hmm. He is like 5,000 followers. <laughs> this guy was supposedly famous in his eyes. Yeah. 5,000 followers. Yeah. I know people that have more than 5,000 followers on Instagram, and they're like <laughs> just kids of the school. Yeah, um. Let's see. You also were getting like snaps and whatnot, right? Like you got one from someone, or maybe it's just like on their snap story if they even have those. I don't know. I don't. I don't use snap. Yeah, um, they they posted something on their story that was like the school has money to afford this. <laughs> yeah, I remember I told that to my mom, and she's like, oh, "Maybe this guy could have volunteered." I was like, "Yeah, but why?" <laughs> yeah, they literally had like trucks pull up and everything to like take out all their equipment. Yeah. Hey, you know, you're not doing this for free. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's see. What are the other slight details we should mention before he um, gets into the speech? The stage was like a rock, like a music stage, right? Yeah. There was of. a chair in the middle. There was two guitars. A drum set. A drum set. Maybe a piano. I don't. I don't. I don't was think, there a piano? I don't think there was a piano. But anyways, there was all this setup. They played two songs, and that was it. That was it. They didn't try any more music. I, you know, I I don't know whether or not I've gotten in trouble for this, but I don't, I don't think I really cared. Um, if I was sitting close enough so they could hear me, I definitely would have shouted, play Hail of the King. You'd be like, what is that? <laughs> yeah. Oh, they don't know, like, Avenged Sinful's biggest song right now. For, but for whatever reason. They played two unrecognizable songs. The guy sat down, he talked... Yeah, a lot. He was, like, talking about, like, his past and, like, being afraid of what people might think of him and, like... Yeah, and the way he was talking about it was so stupid. Like, he was talking, like, saying, like, you know, he was at a party, like, a seventh grade party, and he had to use the bathroom, but he also wanted to impress a girl that this is important for some reason. Mm -hmm. Um, like, you know, he he wanted to impress a girl by, like, you know, showing him his moves... 
And he actually did start dancing, which I didn't see because I started playing my Steam Deck. Gavin, Gavin zoned off. I zoned off. I put it in my earbuds. I didn't want to hear it. Yeah. It. I was still listening, but like I wasn't watching. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, is is like, like his seventh grade mind was so twisted because he was. Like, I'm not joking. He said that he was afraid that people will start making fun of him because he had to use the bathroom. That's basically what he said. He's like, I don't want her to think that I was at a friend's house taking a dump. So I just hid in the bathroom for like three hours, yeah. he said. And this, a- guy, this guy talked like this the whole time, by the way, guys. He had this fake hyped up accent or whatever you want to call this yeah, and he's like voice. cracking jokes and talking like this the whole entire time yeah, it was sp- so speaking annoying. of cracking his voice cracked like every three seconds he did it intentionally i don't know if this guy was trying to be a motivational speaker or like a comedian <laughs> at the same time like he was trying to be both but it wasn't working out at all <laughs> and by the way this story about him being nervous and everything was supposed to be related to like somehow his dad passed which is sad yeah like, the situation behind it was sad because... Yeah, very, very unfortunate. Once again, this was, like, a suicide Except, awareness... Yeah, suicide awareness. ...thing. But, like, half of the stuff that he mentioned during the show was, was completely irrelevant. Yeah. In fact, uh, next, the week after, uh, I had a... My gym class, and my team... My teacher was, like, talking to some of the kids about it. He's like, man, he got... He took a while to get to the point. Yeah. Because this guy didn't mention anything about his dad until, like, the last 20 minutes of this, like, hour-long speech. Uh, and that's the only point where it really mattered. Yeah, like, we kept making, like, bets on where this was going to go and, like, what was going to happen. We got some predictions, right, too. Yeah, it's just... It was just weird. Yeah. It wasn't, like, bad, just I think he, like, needed to up his speech game get more to the point like he was seriously like he was calling out some random kid in the crowd too he was i'm just gonna say his name he was talking to this kid named joey i I don't even know who this kid named joey was but he kept like he'd be like you just want to impress all the girls huh you just want to you just want to talk about how many girls you hang out with right joey he just randomly (laughs) say right joey he's like yeah i bet you don't want to make any of the girls nervous huh joey yeah. It's like, what the fuck is Joey? Yeah, and for sake of reference, just so you guys don't think we're calling anyone else out, there's like 10 Joeys in our grade alone. Yeah, they they won't even know where we go. We yep. definitely go to like Washington State School. Washington State? Yep. That's where we are, guys, totally. Yeah, totally. It's but, like, we've, like we've mentioned, we're in the Midwest. Long, long story, we're all wrapped up. Basically, the speech, not good. <laughs> yeah, it took way too long to get to the point. Yeah, it took way too long to get to the point. They brought all this equipment out only to play two songs. Mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure they didn't even play one of the guitars that they had propped up. Did they? Like, this... It was just bad. Like, I yeah. even... Gavin, so... Gavin knows this. I barely go to school now, right, Gavin? Because yeah. I got other stuff to do. I don't have actual school, like, I don't have classes. I got to class, and then I was like, wait, I could have just not been here. Because the speech was the whole entire time, and they weren't even doing attendance. Yeah. Uh, one of my one of the other kids that we sat with said the same thing. Like, he was in for, uh, like, the like an IT thing that the school offers. And he was told that uh, <laughs> there's a thing today. He's like, he's like, man, I should never have come here. Mm-hmm. I, like... I want to say, like, showed up late, too, even. Like, I was running to the class because I was worried I was going to be late or I was late. Mm -hmm. And then it turns out it was a substitute teacher in my class. And she's like, oh, I'm just doing attendance, and then you guys are going to your thing. And then one of the kids is like, wait, what happens if we just leave? (laughs) And she's she's like, well, I'm not doing attendance after. (laughs) It's like, yeah. Well, then I should have just left. The sole reason why we all stayed was because we assumed we're going to be going back to class, like, somewhat Mm -hmm. after. Nope, the speech went the whole entire time. Yeah, the whole entire time. If I knew that it went the whole entire time, I would have left right there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And I guess one little thing about, like, his whole bathroom thing. Like, he was describing the options. It was like he was... 
It sounded like he was like there during in like freaking Vietnam. He was like, I could I could run out there and deal with all the faces laughing at me, or I could jump through the window off of a two story building into the freezing cold. Into the freezing cold in my short shorts. He he just kept going and going, thinking he was funny, and it wasn't really that funny. Yep. Not one bit. This show might be funnier than him, and that's that's even a stretch, Captain. <laughs> Listen, comedy isn't our thing. We're our... calling this guy out right now. We're yeah. funnier. Yeah, Mr. What's-Your-Name. We're Mr. Not gonna... I forgot your name, influential speaker, famous person, totally 5,000 followers. Yeah. <laughs> so, I guess that's like the the gist of that. Unless we have anything else we can think of, real quick. Mm, not really. Now we go on to. Oh, yeah, we can mention that one quickly and then end it with that one. Maybe like. So I got issues. some uh, good, pretty good news, I guess. Which a uh, good for personal stuff, maybe bad for the podcast. Just kind of depends <laughs> how things work out. Uh, I am getting employed at the same place Ashton is working. Yep. yep. I've been working there for two and a half years. <laughs> I'll be starting sometime next week, probably. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's going to be starting up me off with some pretty good pay, uh, for what it is. And, uh, yeah, that, that's basically the beginning and end of it. We're becoming adults, guys. This is scary. We don't know what to do. <laughs> Yeah. We're going to look back on this years later and be like, it wasn't that bad. Or we're going to be like, God, uh, we yearn for the simpler times. <laughs> oh, to be a kid again. I mean, I think adults always, uh, like, no matter what, they yearn for simpler times unless they made it big. Mm, Even then. I kind of hear, with that argument, though, I kind of hear, like, the opposite sometimes. Like, everyone wishes they could be a kid, right? Yeah. They have none of the stresses of, like, work, job, life, relationships. Mm-hmm. But... At the same time, some adults are like, if I could be prime, I would be 21 because then I get to drink, I get to smoke, I get to be hot. <laughs> yeah. You know, just like all the benefits are like around the age of 21 to like 30. Yeah. So I think it's more that they just wish they could be younger, more in their prime. Yeah. Rather than being kids because kids can't. Yeah, can't, have, kids can't do anything Like relationships, marry drink yeah. smoke unless they unless the kid is really messed up yeah also i guess that is also another thing you know some maybe some people don't want, want to be kids again because maybe they just had a really bad childhood yeah so i i'd say when i'm an adult i'm definitely gonna say i wish i was always 21 yeah 21 is a good age you know you can you have free reign of your life but you know Draft age, so that's other. That's another thing. Draft age is now, Kevin. That's true, <laughs> but you that's know, a worry. <laughs> but still, you know, you should, if anything, uh, draft age at twenty one, it might be a little bit more dangerous because you know you're a bit older. That is true. Um. Anyway, so yeah, that's just basically on that. Kevin got his job. W. Yeah, and uh, real quick, I want to go over uh Castlevania Nocturne the sequel to the original castlevania on uh netflix the that uh anime and i will i really want to say uh you know i guess first i'm not gonna go into deep of a detail like i might up discuss it to like episode three and i mean not even and that's it how many episodes are in it there are eight episodes and there's a season two planned okay uh so the the story itself is uh based off of Rondo of Blood, which is the game that the lead ca- the main character Richter stars in. And it's also based after Symphony of the Night, which is another game that Richter stars in. So it takes place during the French Revolution, hmm. which is a pretty interesting time. That is pretty interesting, especially for Castlevania. Yeah. I mean, for sake of reference, the farthest in the timeline, uh, it's t- actually 2035. Hmm. So, yeah, it gets pretty modern, in spite of the fact they don't actually use any modern weaponry. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Also, there's a lot of goofy Castlevania lore, like, real quick. Uh, Dracula's niece started World War One to bring him back from the dead. Interesting. <laughs> yep. 
And also, Dracula tried to come back during the Second World War. Interesting. <laughs> yeah. There's, there's a, like I said, there's a lot of goofy stuff when it comes to uh, the Castlevania lore. Um, let's see. Uh, I think people probably will have seen this. The opening scene where Richter's mother fights uh, Orlocks, which is, you know, everyone knows how that went. Assuming they've at least watched it because they released it on YouTube. The it called it was like the first seven minutes. Hmm. Um, yeah. Then it kind of goes from there. You know, Richter's all grown up. Uh, but the big thing is that he, like he can't do magic, and like the Belmont line can do. Like they could do magic because of you know things that happened in the in the past. So just to put it that way. Um. Yeah, and you know, he he was a vampire hunter. I honestly, I expected his voice to be like a little bit more deep and gruff. I was not expecting it to be how it sounds. Is it just like too anime-ish? Not really. Like, uh, I could probably play you a sound bit like before I go home for the night. Okay. Just but, not as, not what you expect. Yeah, it's definitely not what you expect. Um, Let's see. Uh, some of the other characters are introduced, like uh, Tara and Maria, who are in Symphony of the Night, I think, and Rondo of Blood. They help uh, Richter with stuff. And contrary to the games, this is where they deviate. Uh, Tara is Maria's mother, which is pretty cool. And okay. Tara actually does something. She is a magician. Did she not in the game? Yeah, yeah she was just like a, a priest that... Or not a priest, a nun that Richter had to save. Okay. Yeah. Uh, then they bring in a few other characters. Uh, Edouard, who is a opera singer and revolutionary. And uh, Annette, who is a race swap from the games. Where originally in the game she was a white woman also, who was also Richter's fiance in the games. But now she is a escaped slave who knows magic. Interesting. And, yeah, it's like it's like a bloodline thing, and like the the thing that really kind of irked me about her character, especially the way through, is that she's kind of a dick. <laughs> to just was well, she just like a like a side character in the games, and then now she has like a whole role. Well, that's that's not it. Where, um. Ba- basically, this is a bit further. Uh, Richter ends up confronting some of, the, some, some of the demons from his past. And, you know, PTSD is a very powerful force. You know, he, he basically gets the fuck out of there. Mm-hmm. And, like, she she's talking, like, uh, Annette's talking with her ancestors or whatever, you know, through, like, a spell. And she mocks him for running away. Uh. You know, and she says that, you know... Hey, I know my price of freedom. I I fought for it. You know, he doesn't have the right to feel scared because look what I had to go through. And it just felt very uh like what's the word? I, I don't really remember. But I also was talking with my mom about this. Uh she feels more of a token character instead of like at least for like what it what it was then, more of a token character than an actual like realistic addition. Just because so it seems like they just threw them in there to like create diversity. Yeah, that kind of sucks. Yeah, I mean, like I said, this is only season one, and I actually have rewatched it a few times, and my opinion of her character did increase. Like overall, like I did, like you know, get get around to what she meant, but I still thought that, you know, the she was written kind of poorly, and uh. I guess to kind of compare and contrast, uh, Isaac from the original Castlevania, he's also a race swap from one of the other games. And the way that he differs is that he's a lot more soft-spoken, and I guess this is also from a period where, you know, you know, African, people of African descent were taken as slaves, at least not majorly. Um, but I guess that's different. Uh, you know, he he has he's gone through his journey. He's had his depth. You know, and he eventually evolves. So I really hope the same thing happens with Annette's character, and she's just not, uh, you know, this kind of moody girl that only really says, "Hey, look what I've been through." You don't have the 
right to feel this way about the the situation. Yeah. Yeah. And uh yeah, that that's basically uh my overview. Um I guess I mean I guess I could talk a little bit more. Uh the animation and music is really good. Like it's it's basically the exact same from uh the original, but you know, it's it's updated a little bit. The music is obviously for, from Rondo of Blood and Symphony of the Night. Um, oh yeah, I guess another complaint is, like, the big bad, just, I don't know, they feel very out of place, uh, she's an original to the series, not from the games, cause Dracula's arc from the games and in the anime is very different from, you know, what it is. show. Yeah. Because, you know, from those, from Symphony of the Night and Rondo of Blood, Dracula's the main bad guy, but because of Dracula's path in the original, they had to uh you know make some creative differences which i can you know which makes sense yeah you know, dracula can't always be the bad guy <laughs> yeah um let's see yeah but it feels like she has a very basic motive for you know a bad guy which obviously is a vampire <laughs> you know if you know castlevania you know it's a vampire everything's a vampire yeah um you know they they also feel very one note for what it's worth, you know, they just kind of say, talk about how powerful they are, and Orlok, so I mentioned, she is expecting him to guide her to the, the free world, or like, once her th- whole thing is done, which, you know, I obviously won't happen, because, you know, of how this would definitely go. And uh, it's left off on a cliffhanger, with a good cliff, good cliffhanger. Yeah, I, I guess you could say that. It definitely makes it's definitely got my interest in season two, whenever that might come out. Uh, that's all I'm really gonna say because if I feel like if I say anything more, it's gonna just kind of spoil the surprise. <laughs> yeah, I have a couple questions. All right, rating from well, first of all, what's your rating like out of ten? I mean, give it a nine. Okay. And what? then another question is, what is your rate? Like, which one's better, the original class Castlevania or this one? I think the original is still better, but that's only because it's had it has the, it's had those four seasons. Okay. Uh, like, it's had every character's gone through, you know, their arcs. They've had their development. Um, You know, and we're only on season one right now. Mm-hmm. So you know things are really just getting started, but uh, yeah, I have high hopes. You know, I hope the characters that I want to improve do improve. I hope the characters that are already pretty good, uh, improve even further. And yeah, I'm really excited to see it, where things go, especially since it's loosely based off of Symphony of the Night, which I know like the bare minimum of the story. Um, and people that know the story and like the kind of like things surrounding it um are also probably interested in where it's gonna go but uh yeah just decent pretty good yeah pretty good pretty good good. anime hear that better make more seasons don't cancel it yeah i mean they probably won't the first castlevania was very successful the (laughs) second one i think it has 100 percent of rotten tomatoes wow yeah also uh I guess for sake of reference, something else I'm excited for that Netflix is doing is that they're, I forget if I mentioned this or not, but they're making a Devil May Cry anime, which is going to be based off of the events of the third game, which is the first in the timeline, and stuff that came before it. So it's like some of the manga that they released, which I'm really uh, psyched for because I love the stuff. Gavin loves Devil May Cry. Like, it's my favorite game series, but I, the those I won't say those are... Actually, all the games I played except for two are easily within my top ten. Hmm. That's W. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I, I guess that's it. <laughs> Any final final notes, comments? Uh, I won't say so. Hmm. Okay. So, uh, would you like to send us off? I will indubitably. <laughs> indubitably. Well, this is the end of episode 27. I hope YouTube listeners enjoyed. We got some gameplay, you know, so you don't got to always look at our amazing faces. Uh-huh. 
and um, this is Ashton. And this is Gavin. Rate five stars, and we will see you later. Off Wiedersehen. Bye.